do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. We got a really great PS2 related tutorial today. We're gonna to be going over Pop Starter and how to use multi-disc games. So like for example, you have Metal Gear Solid. It's a two disc game. How do you swap the game from disc one to disc two or vice versa? Or maybe you got a uh, Final Fantasy seven or something like that, where it's a three disc game. How do you switch between discs, right? So I'll have a link in the video description to this wonderful website that has all this information detailed. And some users were asking me, you know, they still don't understand it. So let me go over a little bit of details on how this works. Like I said, all the instructions here and we'll go through it a little bit later. So what I've done ahead of time is I have a USB thumb drive. It's on my PC and I have it a very certain file format, right? So if I go to my USB real quick here, um, if I go to my pops folder, this is the structure. So in a nutshell, for a USB method, and if you want to do this on internal hard drive for your fat PS2 or SMB network share, similar process. I have specific tutorials on how to use pop starter for those methods, but today's method is strictly on the multi-disc game switching. So I assume that you know, already know how to play your games from USB, SMB, or internal hard drives. So anyways, back to here. So you have your games, you have your VCD files. So this is a two disc game. So you gotta make sure it's named a very certain way. Using um, OPL Manager version 21.6, I do believe, I had to fix the file names. And also notice that it's in sequential order. So disc one, disc two, right? And then when you use pops, it will automatically make these folders or you can make it on your own manually. And inside each of these folders, which is called a VMC folder for each VCD file, right? Inside each folder, there's a disk.txt. You have to make that file manually, okay? So what I did was I made that file. Inside this text file, I have literally the name of the two VCD game file names, right? So here's my file name for the first disk Here's the file name for the second disc, right? So what I did was I saved that text file under the first VMC folder, and then I just literally did a copy paste into the second folder, and that's it, right? And this also assumes that you have this and this if you're doing you know, a USB method or whatever method you're doing. So that's basically the hardest part, I would say, as part of the tutorial. So if we go back to tutorial here, here he says create a disk.txt text file that has the file names of your VCDs, one file name per line. So that's what I showcased earlier. Here's an example. Copy this disk.txt file to the VMC folder of all your game disks, which I showcased earlier, right? Now when you run the game, you have these hotkeys here. So write this down or memorize it or put it up on a computer monitor, whatever you gotta do. But after a while, it's uh, second nature, I, I wanna say. So what I'll do is uh, showcase how to open the lid. Um, so basically you do select L2, R2 plus triangle. So for example, when you're in the game and it says uh, switch from disc one to disc two, for example. Well, you have to simulate opening the lid. So you do this hotkey, right? After you do that hotkey, then go ahead and do the button combination for inserting the next disc. So for example, if I want to insert disc two, I would do select L2, R2, plus the right D-pad. Um, basically hold everything down at the same time. Or what I like to do is I hold the select L2 and R2 uh, already and then use my extra finger, for example, and press one of the D-pad keys, right? So I would have select R L2, R2 already held down and then I could use one of my fingers to press you know, the right D-pad or the top D-pad to switch between disc one and disc two, for example. Once you have inserted your button combination for your specific disc, go ahead and do the button combination to close the lid. So select, L2, R2, and square. All four of these buttons will have to be depressed simultaneously uh, in order for this to work, basically. The limitations is up to four file names in disk.txt. File name must not exceed 89 characters. VC files have to be in the same partition or folder. And if you have more than four lines in the disk.txt file, the feature will not work. So let's say, for example, you have an eight disk game for some reason, then what you wanna do is play through disk one, two, three, and then your disk four becomes the new disk one, and then five, six, and seven, for example, since you only have four lines to work with at a time. And you can read through some of this other stuff here, but this is how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, go to my video capture card, and show you this process. I'm gonna start with Metal Gear Solid, I'm gonna start with disc two, 
and showcase that when I do a new game, I can't do a new game with disc two. I have to do it with disc one. So I'm going to do the button combinations on the fly uh, and, and transition to disc one basically and showcase that it works. So with that said, let's jump straight into the next portion of the video tutorial. Let's do this. All right, so let's do this. I got free make boot, but of course you can use Fortuna, you could use Fun Tuna, whatever your method is going to be to launch your OPL or open PS2 loader. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, in the video description link, I am using one of the latest daily builds of OPL, which allows you to use Pop Starter. Um, I think the method works okay, you know, but if you want to do something else, by all means, go ahead. So we can see that um, Pop Starter already recognized my two games, excellent, or two discs rather. So let's go ahead and start with disc two. And I'm gonna show you an example where I try to start the game and it's gonna say, well, insert disc one. And this is where you do the button combination. It works great, right? So I'm doing the USB method and I haven't played the game too extensively, but it does work. Um, audio seems to work out fine. The gameplay sequence movie seems to be okay too. So, but if you want a better experience, possibly go with the SMB route or go an internal hard drive if you have a fat PS2. And I am using component cables and it, it works fine. But of course, if you're using like a HDTV that doesn't like your pop starter, then what you could do is uh, see one of my earlier tutorials and how you can do a fix there with a cheat code. Okay, so I'm gonna press the start button and if I do a new game, right, this is disc two, it's going to say insert disc one, right? So where's the message? Right there, insert disc one. Okay, so if you remember the hotkeys, I am going to do select L2, R2, and triangle. After you open the lid, it's going to say press the start button after inserting disc one. So let's go ahead and insert disc one. The hot key for disc one is select L2, oops, select L2, R2, and uh, D-pad up, okay? It doesn't tell you any notification about switching discs, so you just gotta hope that you did it correctly and it got the correct disc. Now let's go ahead and close the lid. So select L2, R2, square, okay? And then press start. There is no confirmation that the lid is closed. There's no confirmation that you're switching disc. So you just gotta make sure you press the hotkeys correctly. If you did it wrong, then I guess it wouldn't switch to disc one. And uh, now we see that it's working because if I did it totally wrong and stayed on disc two, for example, it wouldn't it wouldn't be playing this game, um, you know, this movie sequence basically, right? So that's how you do it. And likewise, if you're on disc one, then this just go me. ahead and, and do the, the hotkeys for disc clear. two which is select L2, R2 plus D-pad, like the elevator right. in the back is the only So let me skip all this stuff here, da da da. And yeah, now you can see it's working. So that is a quick tutorial, how to use Pop Starter, multi-disc games, switching between various discs. I know we had a lot of users asking about that, and I finally got a chance to do it. It's not as bad as you think it is once you get the hang of it. And uh, that's pretty much it. You guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.